Hey there guys, today we're going to be upgrading the GMK Tech K8 to 96 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. The system in its specifications did claim that it could support all the way up to 96 gigabytes and well that got me curious to try it out. So we're going to pop off the lid here and here we have this shroud that is essentially just here to hold this center fan that is cooling both the RAM and the SSD. See, GMK Tech had an issue with a previous model, the K4, that had the Ryzen 9 7940HS, and that kept thermal throttling, but not thermal throttling in the CPU, but in the RAM, and that was actually causing performance issues in gaming. So this was their solution for that, and it's not ideal, but it does get the job done. One of the more annoying things is that to actually pop it off, you do have to use quite a bit of force. I had to use these tweezers here to help me pry it open so that I could get my fingers in there and then pop it off with a lot more force than I would have liked. But once you take it off, you can just put it off to the side. You don't really need to unplug the fan. It has more than enough length to not be a problem. Here we have the two M.2 slots, of course, with the open one there and the default two terabyte one. I was originally going to put four terabytes of extra storage in here, but unfortunately i couldn't find a real good price on an ssd that was actually decent so instead i went with these redline 48 gigabyte ddr5 sticks now each one is of course 48 gigabytes and that together makes 96 we're gonna pop these in and we just easily pop out the old ones just to slot in the new ones that go in there extremely easily and i know you're thinking well what are you gonna do with 96 gigabytes on a mini pc like this this seems a little overkill and yeah it is but there are actually certain workloads that will benefit from this much memory See, that means that each of the eight cores that are in this system can have up to 12 gigabytes allocated to them so if you're hosting a home lab having 96 gigabytes of ram in such a small package is really nice especially with one that has a dual nick because you could really do a lot of home management here putting into windows though we could open up task manager and here we can see we have 96 6 gigabytes of course we only have about 92 available to us and that's because four gigabytes are allocated to the igpu but that does mean that we could also bump up that allocated amount pretty significantly so let's boot up into the bios and once we get to the bios all we have to go to is the advanced settings here and it is under the graphics configuration it's pretty much the only thing you can do on here unfortunately it seems like it caps out at 16 gigabytes it would have been nice to be able to put 32 gigabytes that way you could have 32 dedicated gigabytes to your igpu and then you'd have 64 for your actual system but 16 gigabytes should be more than enough and if we boot into windows here we, you can see that we do have less system memory available because more has been allocated to the igpu so let's see what this actually did for us in uh in games so the first game that i tried out was far cry 6 and i downloaded the optional hd texture pack that it claims you need to have at least 11 gigabytes of vram before you even download it so i'm expecting a monster for visuals here but unfortunately the amount of vram we actually ended up using wasn't really all that significant you can see we're pretty much barely passing eight gigabytes and overall system memory usage is only at 16 and a half gigabytes but not anywhere really nearing maximizing these 96 gigabytes let alone the 16 that were allocated just for vram alone so i decided to also try out returnal and go into the graphics settings and pretty much turn up anything that would turn up the vram without greatly affecting the gpu or the cpu and so running everything with the lowest in-game graphics settings fsr at performance and of course the textures set up higher as well as the models you get decent enough performance but again the vram utilization is not really high at all same with system memory which again we should expect as you can see here with spider-man running at the medium graphics settings fsr set to quality and of course the textures set to ultra we're still not really utilizing all that much memory and our ram utilization also is not extreme at all it's uh it's really funny to see how much people freak out about memory capacity when uh this is showing it doesn't really seem to be that big of a deal so obviously in gaming 96 gigabytes of ram is not useful 
wasteful. That is not news to anyone, I hope at least. But it's not a gaming upgrade. It's an upgrade that is meant to make this system a lot more flexible for a wide variety of different workloads. For example, if you're working in music production, you are more than likely not using all of your CPU cores when you're actually working, but you're probably using quite a lot of VRAM, or rather just system RAM in general. 96 gigabytes would probably be very attractive for someone that is doing a lot of music production and you're using a lot of plugins, you have a lot of tracks, you have a lot of effects in general that all together to get processed probably isn't a lot of CPU power, but the RAM utilization is crazy. Crazy. There's a lot of workloads that are like that. For example, as well with me, I switched recently from AM4 to an Intel system. So I now have an i9-12900K and it was a pretty solid price for everything that I got. But one of the downsides is that I went from 64 gigabytes of RAM on my AM4 system to 32 gigabytes. I didn't think it was going to be that much of a problem. Then I opened up Premiere and tried to open up a project that I had been working on the day before and I kept getting a memory loading issue. I was thankfully able to fix it by increasing my page file size, but that was kind of a workaround or something that could have been prevented with just having more RAM. And I could almost guarantee you a system like this could do all of the editing work that I would need to do, especially with 96 gigabytes of RAM, considering that this is three times the amount that is in my desktop. And the single core performance here is actually very comparable. Of course, the system does does end up using up about a third of the wattage of my desktop. It's definitely an interesting upgrade and I'm glad that we're able to get this much performance and capacity in such a small package. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one.